Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, the long awaited IOD spring release. Yes, it is officially happening right now. Uh, all the items are released and this is part of an IOD spring release collaboration. In the description, there is going to be a playlist. Definitely check it out, guys. It is full of all kinds of amazing creators and you guys are gonna get a ton of inspiration. So stick around for my video today. I am gonna feature some of the uh, release items in today's video. And then also on my next video will be another whole IOD release, so watch for that. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. For project one, I love receiving emails asking me if I want something free, and that is how I found these two chairs. I received an email from a fellow viewer asking if I'd want them. I absolutely fell in love with them. I always like to embrace the imperfections of a piece, and that is exactly what I planned on doing until, you guys, I saw the paint inlay from IOD. It's called Lattice Rose and it has four beautiful images. You end up getting two sheets per image and you can use them separately or you can use them all together on a project. I absolutely fell in love with it the moment I saw it, you guys. It's so beautiful. And if you haven't used a paint inlay before, keep in mind, a paint inlay can be used multiple times. And this could be all the way up to four times per use. Uh, just every time you use it, it becomes a little bit more distressed looking, which is really cool. A paint inlay actually has paint on the paper and you embed that paper or that paint inlay in the paint or top coat on your piece. Before we can start this project though, we have to do some minor repairs. I'm taking Type Bond and I am going to put it in all the areas where we have loose pieces or pieces that have fallen off. And then I'm taking my brad nailer and I'm going to add a brad nail here and there just to give it a little bit more stability. While that's drying, I take my ruler and I'm going to get some measurements. My vision here is I want to add a piece of paint inlay to each piece on the actual chair. So I'm going to measure each of these pieces and we're going to go inside and start cutting. My initial vision was I wanted to use three of the patterns on the chair. The fourth pattern I wanted to also use on a different project, so I set that aside. And that's when I started cutting and I started second guessing myself. So I knew I had the length correct, but then when I started thinking about the width of each of those boards, that's when I was like, I should probably remeasure to make sure. My dad was in construction and he always says, measure twice and only cut once. And so I thought I better go back outside and remeasure the width to make sure I had those right and when I got back outside that's when things started changing. I started realizing I didn't like the look of what I initially had envisioned. Sometimes it just takes you going out and actually putting all the pieces together to realize you don't like something. I, I started cutting that first pattern and I laid that out. I cut the second pattern and I laid that out. And then when I got to that third pattern, I realized I did not like it at all. And I started laying um, the pattern down. I thought, well, maybe if I flipped the pattern and did it a different way, I just felt like it was not gonna look right how I had it on the chair because the pieces were not wide enough and I didn't get a good enough image on that third piece. So that's when everything changed and I quickly kiboshed my first idea and then I went all in on only one pattern and you guys, I love it. It reminds me of fabric on the seat. When using a paint inlay, you can put down paint like a chalk style paint or you can use a top coat here i'm using big top from diy i've done this multiple times and it works so well i don't want to add paint to these chairs like i said earlier i really want to embrace the imperfections so i want the paint and lay on there 
but just not any additional paint. So a top coat is gonna work perfectly. The key here is this is very time sensitive. So what I do is I lay down my top coat and then I mist my paint inlay with my misting bottle to activate the paint in it. And then I lay down my paint inlay in that top coat. I then take my fingers and, or you can use um, like a brayer. I just was using my hand and I was really embedding that paint inlay in there. I then mist that paint inlay again and then really rub very well. And then I just work my way down and I do that over the entire piece. And then this is where it's the time sensitive. So what I did is I actually did not show this on camera, but I brought it inside and I just zapped it a little bit with my heat gun just to dry it enough. And you don't want it to be too dry, but you don't want it to be too wet. Um, you can kind of tell that it, there's a little bit of just a slight dampness in the paper yet. Uh, the paper does look dry, but because we're using a top coat, you don't want to seal that paper in. Here you can see that the paper looks semi-dry. It's very white. So what you do then next is you take your misting bottle, you re-mist your entire paint inlay. So I really saturate it very well. I also just have always a damp rag um, or a piece of paper towel um, next to me just in case there's too much water that it doesn't absorb back into that paper. But when the paper gets uh, uh, wet enough, then you start peeling it back. And what happens is the paint is embedded then in that top coat. And then I just work my way down. And I do that to each one of these slats. And you guys, it is so satisfying taking these pieces off and then seeing that beautiful paint inlay on top of whatever project you're working on. Here is the second chair and I'm doing the exact same thing. I am re-misting uh, it and what I found that each chair actually looks a little different. I'm at the point where I don't know if I should sell them as a set or individually price them because one has more of a worn seat and the other one is a bit more red. I did take my sander and I tried to like distress the red seat a little bit more to get it more worn and it just won't come off. So I just want to show you this whole process again and how different that one looks versus the other. Now it's time to seal your paint inlay. Even though I did use a top coat, I still recommend you seal it. And if it is something that you're going to, or it's going to be heavily used, I would recommend sealing it uh, even two times. Now, the tip I'm going to recommend is when you seal your paint and lay, heavily load up your paintbrush with the sealer and with a very light hand apply your sealer. I have found people say that it smears and it's when they don't have enough of the top coat on their paintbrush and then they have a very heavy stroke and that will cause your paint inlay to smear. I just recommend um, doing that like just load up the brush and then with a very light hand or light stroke just put it on and honestly um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that you can actually spray your top coat on as well. For project two, we are gonna use the new mold from IOD called Invitation Only. And you guys, when I saw these cute little busts, I just, I had to use them. I had to figure out a way uh, to incorporate them into a home decor piece. 
And we are using uh, the amazing casting resin, which I think will be perfect. Uh, so for starters, we are going to mix a 50-50 ratio uh, of the, the mix itself. I want to let you know, and you may or may not know this, next to each of the actual molds, it will tell you how many milliliters of resin you need. So you can try to mix exactly what you need. Uh, with these little rubber containers that I have, it actually has a 20, 40, 60, 80. So you can have a really good measurement and actually mix a lot more than with those tiny little cups that it comes with. So I am putting in 50% um, percent or like a 50, 50 mixture of A and B. I stir really well and then I pour it into the molds that I want to use it in. While the molds are setting up, what I'm doing here is I'm going to paint these four boards in the color Tarnished Pearl from DIY Paint. I plan on using a paint and lay on the boards, so what I'm going to do is apply one even coat of uh, either chalk style or clay style paint like DIY is. I'm going to let it dry very thoroughly, and then when we apply the second coat of paint, that's when we place the paint and lay in there, and I'll show you how to do that next. We're going to use the paint inlay called Lattice Rose and I'm going to use that bottom image. It does come with four beautiful images but I thought for this one I want to use this bottom one. It reminds me of almost like a wallpaper and we are going to then take those molds and put it on the like the faux wallpaper. So I line up my board. I do want to have just a little bit of an overhang on each side. Um, I don't want to waste too much of the paint and lay when I'm cutting the the shape of the piece out but just enough just in case you know when I lay it down it moves a little bit um, I do that with my decoupage papers as well now that I have all four pieces cut out, we're going to apply the paint inlay. And what I'm doing here is applying just a nice even coat of the uh, DIY paint in Tarnished Pearl. And when I was at the IOD conference, I saw Jonathan Mark Mendez uh, and he did a demonstration on the paint inlays. He does recommend that the second coat is just a little bit thicker than the first and that you take your misting bottle and you mist your paint inlay to activate the paint on the actual paper and then apply it into the paint. After that, then what I do is I take it and I rub my hand very like all over the paint and lay to really embed that paint and lay in the wet paint. You can use a brayer and then I also take my misting bottle and I mist the whole back side uh, and that just really helps activate that paint on that paper. Now I'm going to do that to all four boards and I'm going to let these dry and then come back and we will finish the boards up. It's been 10 minutes and the molds are ready. So all you do is you just pop them right out of the molds. It's super easy. And look at these guys. Oh my gosh, they are so stinking cute. I love all the detail, but as you can see, they are white and it's they have a lot of detail, but I really want to make all that detail pop. So I'm going to do a couple things to the molds to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is use Fusion's Gold Metallic Paint, and I am going to apply two even coats of the metallic paint to the molds. And you guys, I just think they are so cute right now. As I was looking at them though, even though the gold really did emphasize a lot of the detail, I felt like it needed just something more. So I decided once they all dried, I am going to use a dark wax and we're going to get into all that nitty gritty detail and really make it pop. Well, the molds are drying, now these are dry, so let's take our misting bottle and reactivate that paper. So what you want to do is completely mist it, and I always take like a damp rig or a piece of paper towel if there's any excess water and wipe that away. Um, if it just all saturates into the paper, that's perfect. I start on one corner or one side, and I just start uh, peeling back. And you guys, look at 
all this beautiful image in my, embedded in my paint. I love it. It completely transforms your piece. And I am really into mixed media and adding backgrounds, layers, and this is just another little added layer to your project, which I absolutely love. Because we're going to apply the molds, I do want to seal the piece. And anytime you use a paint inlay, you do want to seal it. I'm using Big Top from DIY Paint, and I am going to apply just one even coat to the entire paint inlay. I always suggest loading up your paintbrush and with a very light hand applying that uh, top coat. I have heard other people say that it has smeared and by doing a very light hand and a loaded up paintbrush it will prevent you from smearing your paint inlay. You can always go back and add a second coat. Uh, the first coat will then really seal it. So just know that there's always that possibility. You can always add a second coat or if you'd prefer, you can get a misting bottle and you can mist it on as well. Next up, we are gonna add the dark wax to our molds. And what I'm loving is that the DIY products and the Fusion products, you can intermingle them. So I use the Fusion metallic paint. Because it comes with a top coat built in, I can use the DIY wax right over that and it will blend seamlessly. So I am just going in with a nice even coat of the dark wax. And then I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel and then rub away any of the excess and all that dark wax is going to be in every one of those little nooks and crannies and it's really going to make all that detail of your project pop. I think this project could have gone either way. We could have left them gold and just left them as is or gone my route. So keep that in mind. If you like that other look better, you can definitely go with just the plain gold or whatever metallic color you want. The next item we're going to use for this project is called Apothecary Labels. And when I saw that the IOD sisters created this product, I literally screamed when I opened up the box. I have been wanting small letters. I love the letterpress set, you guys, and I love all the big letters, but I work with so many small pieces that a lot of times I want to add just tiny little letters to a project. And look, they gave us four different fonts. I am so excited about this, or four different sizes, I should say. And then a bunch of labels as well. So this is like the most amazing set. And I am going to maybe even get two sets of them so that I have multiple letters. Um, but for this part of the project, what we're going to do is we are going to take one label and we're going to create a label for under each of these guys. And we are going to stamp out their name. I'm picking out the label I want and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own decoupage paper with one of these labels. What you guys are going to need is just a standard piece of white tissue paper. Lay it out. I'm using DIY's White Swan. Anytime you use decoupage paper, it is recommended to have a white background. And by starting with a white background, it really makes your image pop. But because the backside is going to be the paint inlay, and I don't want it to peep through the paper, we are painting it white. So I'm just applying just a really nice uh, even coat of the uh, DIY paint to the tissue paper. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to stamp on the tissue paper. I should also note two other things. If it was just a white background that we were decoupaging on, we would uh, we could eliminate this step. Uh, but because we are wanting to hide the background, that's why we're painting it white. The other thing I want to mention is um, you want to make this large enough for your stamp. So I kind of measured out how many of those that I want to stamp. And that's what you want to make sure you have enough white for that. 
Now that this is dry, I am opening up my brand new set of stamps. And anytime you get brand new stamps from IOD, it is recommended that you season them or condition them. So you just take a piece of sandpaper and you rub the sandpaper all over the stamp. It just helps it take ink a little bit easier. Next, I'm going to peel off the stamp of choice and I'm going to place it on a small thin mount. A uh, recommendation I do, um, or something I do recommend, is taking a large thin mount and I always I chop it up into a couple different sizes to fit the different stamp sizes. And then I also have one really big thin mount as well. I'm using the black ink, so I'm inking it up and I always start off with a test stamp and that had a little bit too much ink on it. So next time when I go in, I am going to just add a little bit less ink. I'm gonna more have more of a light hand when I ink it up. And then when I place it down, I just rub very lightly to get a nice clean image. The ink is dry, so now I am taking my scissors and I will cut these all out and then they'll be ready to decoupage on to each of my projects. Now this is going to be the part that I'm enjoying the most because I, like I said before, I have been wanting these small letters for quite some time. So the first thing I do is I season them with a very light grit sandpaper and then because the letters are so small, it is harder to line them up and get them nice and straight. It's just a little bit more difficult or takes just a little bit more time. So what I recommend is using, like I said, a thin mount because it has a really nice straight edge on there. And then you can line it up with that straight edge. It makes it so much easier. The other thing is always flip it over and look at the front after you you lay your stamps down. First of all, you want to make sure you have them in the right order. Um, so you're spelling your name or whatever word you're writing out correctly. And then you can really tell if it's nice and straight or if you just have to adjust a letter here or there. The other thing is don't be afraid to do a test stamp. So ink it up and then stamp and see how it looks. If it looks a little wonky, just lay it back down and readjust that letter. It's so super easy. So I've already named all these guys and I am going to um, go ahead and stamp each of the labels and then I'm going to apply them. Now that I have these all stamped, I am going to start putting this project together. The uh, paint and lay is completely dry. I am using tight bond on the back of my mold and I'm using, I always squirt a little bit in the center and then I use my finger and I like feather it to the edges. What you don't want happening is when you lay your image or your uh, mold down, you don't want a lot of the tight bond to ooze out uh, because it will dry like that and you want a really nice clean image. So I always try to smooth it and kind of feather it to the edges and then make sure that there's not a lot hanging over um, at the sides. I wipe away any excess right away. Then I lay it down and make sure that it is exactly where I want it. And then I just put enough pressure on it to make sure it's really secure. And now it is time to go ahead and decoupage on Joe's name. I'm using Liquid Patina from DIY Paint. It is definitely my go-to for decoupaging and it is super easy. So for starters, we line up where we want our decoupage piece of paper and I flip it, um, I basically position it, I flip one side up, I lay down a little bit of the liquid patina, lay down the decoupage paper, and then I smooth it out, and then I flip up the other side, lay down a little bit of the decoupage medium, lay down the paper, smooth it out, and there you have it. It eliminates all your wrinkles and you get it in the exact spot that you want.
For project three, I thrifted these three suitcases a while ago and they have been sitting in my inventory because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Did I want to sell as is or did I want to upcycle them? They were slightly beat up. You can see there's some little nicks. Uh, the insides looked good though. So it was really the exterior. And then when I saw the new IOD transfer called Joy de Roses, I'm probably butchering the name, but honestly, I knew right away these three suitcases were going to be upcycled using that transfer. The first thing we're going to do is use a little black dress from DIY Paint, and we are painting all three suitcases two even coats and if you haven't used DIY paint before it is a clay based paint and once you apply it and you seal it and it cures it will stick to virtually anything and it is rock hard. So I am using the Perfectionist paintbrush and Debbie Beard from DIY paint created these paintbrushes specifically for the uh, DIY paint. And the Perfectionist uh, works great in getting into all the nooks and crannies of the suitcase. So there's all that stitching with all those little dots. The Perfectionist gets right in there and helps get that paint um, really embedded into that suitcase. So it makes the whole project so much easier. Next, I want to show you this beautiful transfer, you guys. I envision this on either like a dresser as well, but keep in mind, all the transfers you can use on large furniture pieces, you can use on small items such as these suitcases, even small uh, decor pieces for your home. So the transfers are meant to either be applied as is or you can cut them up and you know intermingle with other transfers uh, or piece together um, however you want. But you guys, is this not just beautiful? Oh, I love it. I just love the color. I um, right away knew that this was going to be on the large suitcase, these two pieces. And once the pieces are dried, then I laid it out. I wanted to see exactly for sure if these two would fit. And it was a perfect fit for the large suitcase. So in order to apply a transfer to the DIY paint, it is recommended that you seal it. So I am going to seal it with Big Top. And the other thing is once you seal your piece, you want to make sure it is completely dry before you go and try to apply your transfer. What I'm doing here is I want to cut off a little bit of the excess on each of the centers just to make sure that I'm lining it all up correctly. And I know where the center of the suitcase is, but I still want to be able to just eyeball it and make sure that I'm getting it exactly where I want it. Now that the suitcase is completely dry, I'm applying this. And if you haven't used an IOD transfer before, it does come with a transfer stick and it's super easy. You just peel off that backing of your transfer, lay it down, and then smooth it out. And I always start on one side of the transfer with the transfer stick and I just start rubbing and I rub and then I start peeling the front portion of the transfer off like the plastic piece that the transfer is stuck to. I start peeling that off and I just work my way from one side to the other. If a piece as you're pulling that piece, that, um, plastic piece back. If a piece of your transfer does not stick, just lay it right back down, rub again, and the transfer will go right on. Once you have it completely on your piece, I always just cut off a little chunk of that backing and I rub it all over my transfer and that is called burnishing it. You really burnish that transfer into your piece to really get that in there. And then I go and I line up my next piece and then I do the exact same thing. What do you think, guys? I All I can say is, wow, I love it. I think it turned out so beautiful. 
But anytime you apply a transfer to any piece, it is recommended that you seal it. So I am using DIY's Big Top and I am applying just an even coat to the entire piece. Now I'm gonna give you a peek of what I did to the medium suitcase and what I did to the small suitcase with the remaining pieces of transfer. Just like I had with the large suitcase, I laid out the transfer, cut away the excess, and then I start on one side and I work my way. I apply the first piece and get that all down, and then I go to the second piece. I line it up and lay down my second piece, and again, just start on one side, work my way down, and you guys, I mean, look at how beautiful this suitcase is turning out. It is... Oh, Honestly, this transfer is just amazing. For the third suitcase, which is the smallest, I am taking just one section and I am fitting it right down into the front. And I, again, start on one side, I work my way down, and this one turned out absolutely gorgeous as well. The last step of this project is I am taking Fusion's mineral paint in the metallics and it is called bronze. I'm applying two even coats to the entire locking mechanism and I think this really just elevates the entire look and feel of the suitcases and then this project is complete. For project four, I am using the mold called Specimen. And when I saw this, I thought this was so cool. It is very unique. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, when those IOD sisters create, they just create big. So right away, my first thought for this was this is going to be perfect for Halloween decor. But then it got me thinking about just everyday decor. And it made me realize you can use this on your gallery walls or like in a little boy's room, depending on how you style it. To start this project, what I'm using is the amazing casting resin. It does take roughly 10 minutes to set up and I'm using these uh, silicone uh, cups and they are um, there are measurements on the side which are really nice. So like 20, 30, 40, it goes all the way up I think to like 80. And when you use the amazing casting resin, you use 50% part A, 50% part B and you want them very accurate and then you just take a little stick and you stir it up uh, just until it turns clear and then you can put it in in all of your molds. Now next to each mold there is the amount of milliliters it will take to fill up that mold. So I, I roughly added it all up and I just go over a little just to make sure I have a slight excess in case something did not you know come out just perfect and then I leave it sit for 10 minutes and it's ready. I had to show you this in uh, super fast mode as it's setting up. It is very satisfying to see it go from clear to white. Now that they're set up, they pop right out. See how easy? And I love how there's so many different sizes. So I had a vision of what I wanted to use as the base. And they used to carry these pieces, these wood pieces at Walmart. And they had more of like a beveled edge. And I went there and they did not have them any longer. 
I have found that there's some things that I really like there and they just stop carrying it. So they did have these three pieces and I still liked them because the, the very edges had a little lip around them and I think that is going to give me the same type of look that I was actually envisioning with um, when I was brainstorming how I wanted to do this. So I initially wanted three very large bugs um, but in the end I finally decide I'm going to actually take one of these pieces and we're going to put three of them on there. Now for the bugs, I am going to, or we're going to call them specimens, for the specimens, I am going to paint them the bronze metallic paint from Fusion. And I'm applying two even coats of paint to all the uh, specimens. I'm going to let them dry very thoroughly in between coats, but I just think this is going to look perfect against the background that I'm going to be painting on those wood pieces. I was digging around in my inventory and on the left I found this other board and the true intention of that board is for like a set of uh, antlers from a deer but we're going to repurpose it and we are actually going to use it for this entire display. So I am using Fusion's mineral paint in coal black and I am going to paint all the pieces coal black and I am going to apply two even coats. Now that it's all dry, I'm taking a piece of sandpaper and I am just going to sand around the very edge. Because there is that little tiny like lip around the edge, I really want to make that pop and stand out. And this, by sanding it and distressing just the edge, it's definitely going to help really make that pop and look more like 3D. For this piece, we are going to go back to the bronze and on that very edge or that lip, we're painting that the bronze. And I'm just taking a very fine tip paintbrush, uh, which makes it very easy to paint that. And I'm just going around the edge and doing one even coat. It has really good coverage and really only one coat is what I needed for that. Now it's time to put together this project. I'm breaking out the type bond, which is definitely my go-to glue. And I am applying a little type bond on the back of each of these little specimens. And I have mentioned in the past that really squirt it in the middle and then take your finger and just lightly feather it to the edges. You don't want a lot of oozing out when you set down your uh, mold. Once you set it down, just make sure you put it right in the center and then I always just make sure I put enough pressure on it to get a really good adhesion. Uh, once I do that, I just move on to the next mold and continue on with all of them doing that same exact thing. I let these dry. Um, it takes doesn't take very long for the type on to set up and dry, but 24 hours is probably good. That way you can then put it into your decor. But I absolutely love how this turned out and I just think it has just like a real moody feel to it. I can't wait to hear how you guys are going to use this in your home decor. Are you going to save it for Halloween? Are you going to create something for uh, your kids' room? Are you going to try to put it into your gallery wall? Let me know in the comments. Lastly, it's time to finish this one. And I think you guys, I'm keeping this one for myself. The other three I'm gonna actually end up putting into one of my booths, but I think this is gonna fit perfectly in a little space in my home.
For my fifth and final project, I love upcycling old vintage books. On a recent live, I transformed this one with the paint inlay called Rose Chintz, and that drove the inspiration for this flip or this upcycle. I'm using the new uh, transfer from IOD. It's called Lover of Flowers, and you guys, uh, this is one of my favorite all-time sizes of transfer books. I love it. Um, they came out with uh, the other transfers over the holiday release, and I just think that they're a great size. So there's a lot jam-packed into this book. It's full of all things botanical, sayings, uh, so it is definitely a fan favorite of mine. And I am going to pick out some transfers from here, and we are going to transform this book. After going through the transfer book, I did pick out a few uh, flowers that I really liked and I positioned them on the book so I know where I want to add the paint. I want to make it look a little bit similar to the other book that I did on that live. I am using White Swan from DIY and then I'm going to just randomly put um, the paint all over the book. And it's going to look random, but I definitely want that space where the writing is. I want that to be white so the writing really pops off the book. And um, then I'm just going to, after I get that positioned, then I'm just, then it's going to be more random where I place the paint. I had actually uh, saw something very similar on Pinterest where a person had randomly painted a book. And when I did this on my live, I was like, I don't know if I, I can be as random as that person and I don't have a picture to look at. And I, I was very nervous on my live, but it ended up turning out so great that I'm like, okay, this is going to turn out great too, right? And as you can see, I am already having a bit of a problem. I wasn't anticipating um, bleed through. So when I put the white on, there was a slight bleed through and I thought, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to add it just, it was like a pink bleed through. And I thought I would grab petticoat pink and I would add a little petticoat pink uh, to the book. And um, I'm, then I went back and I added a little bit more white to blend um, to make some of the areas not as pink and more blending. And overall, like I'm like, okay, I'm at the point where I can try to embrace this. Uh, I'm going to roll with it and then I'm going to show you what happened. Well, what happened first and foremost is I applied the transfers before sealing it. And that was my number one mistake because even though I do know some creators do this where they apply transfers before they seal, I have been really trying to seal all my paints before I apply the transfers. If I would have applied the sealer, I would have been able to fix this problem sooner, faster, quicker. So I am applying these transfers and once I apply the transfers, I went to seal it or I sealed it, I should say, and I had massive bleed through. So I'm gonna show you how I'm applying these transfers and then I'm gonna show you the bleed through and you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. When you are applying the wording, you just have to be a little bit more um, cautious and have a little bit more patience because there are a lot of little tiny letters. So just be aware of that. Sometimes with the flowers or the florals that are all one big piece, it's a little, it's actually a whole lot easier to apply those. So I go ahead, I get the wording all laid down, and then I moved off, I moved that big piece down to the bottom. There was like a larger space down there and I just thought it would fill that a lot better. So I end up um, applying that. And again, I start on one side, I work my way over. If you have not used a transfer before, it is super easy, you guys. You just start on one side, you rub, and then you start pulling that plastic back and you just keep rubbing and the transfer just applies to your piece. And then you burnish it in so you really embed that into your project. 
I'm still really loving it at this point. And then I go and I apply this top transfer. I do the exact same thing. And I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. I am like, okay, so at this point, I'm thinking I'm just going to add, like I did with the last book, I added a little bit of gold here and there, and that's the gold wax. And I'm like, I'll do that, and it will be perfect. And then I go to seal it, and I'm using Big Top to seal it. And just so you know, that any sealer that I would have used would have had the same type of reaction. So I believe that it's the material that the book was made out of. It was more of like a brown. Um, the other books that I've used, uh, like the, uh, the other one that I painted and sealed, that was green. So I don't know if it was because I have no idea what type of material it was. Um, or if it was just like the color of the ink that was in the book. Um, if any of you know, let me know in the comments because I'm still a little baffled because I've done this a couple times now and I've not had this reaction. So I go from embracing the slight bleed through um, to all of a sudden it just a massive bleed through and it was so pink that... <laughs> It didn't even look good with the flowers. So I I just have to laugh because I'm looking at it changing and I right now I was I was cringing as I was watching it. I'm like maybe I need to add some gold wax to it and some dark wax and that's exactly what I did. So I broke out DIY's dark wax and then DIY's golden rule and I just start blending and I start adding the dark wax at first and I'm I'm like how much should I add and I was like it, you know at this point I'm thinking this is completely ruined and I'm feeling really bad because I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to start this all over. And I'm like, no, you can fix it. And in the end, I absolutely love how this turned out. I just had to keep trusting the process and adding a little bit more dark wax, a little bit more gold wax. And after I got the bottom kind of set, I was starting to really see the vision of the book. And I'm like, okay, I'm in it now. I'm going to start working on the top. I'm going to be adding a lot more dark wax, a lot more gold wax. I'm going to really start blending it in a whole lot more. And I really was liking how everything was looking except the wording. And then I had to make an executive decision that I think I had to cover up some of the wording. So I went all in and I really started covering up that wording. Um, I had a little bit of it peeping through here and there. But like I said, in the end, you guys, I really think this turned out awesome. What did you guys think? I absolutely loved this release and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think in the comments. So let me know what your favorite item was today and then tell me what you think of the IOD release. I think it was absolutely outstanding and the IOD sisters just did an amazing job uh, just coming up with these new products. So they definitely hit it out of the park. Now watch for my next video because I am going to be showcasing a bunch more items in that and give you guys a ton more inspiration. And then don't forget in the description, I will have a playlist linked and that is going to be all the other content creators that put out some more inspirational videos for you to show you how to use all these new release items. All right, well, we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.